Welcome! I'm so glad you're here. I'm Gila Ross, parenting educator and coach, author of Living Beautifully and host of the Confident Parent podcast, bringing you the content you need to bring more ease, joy and love into your parenting so that you can show up as the parent you want to be to your children. Just as a quick reminder, what we're trying to do here is this is not a quick fix method, right? It's, it's something that we're trying to create a habit. We're cr- creating habits in our home that is going to set our kids up for success. So we discussed two tools, we spoke about this, um, what we call the Kodak moment, where we, we, we visit with our child, we just describe no judgment, just a description of what we see them doing. You know, I see that you are coloring your picture. You look like you're enjoying that. And what that does is basically just reminds our kids that number one, we're noticing them. And number two, that they don't have to act up to get our attention. And the second, I, the second is to build on that was experiential recognition, right? When we, when we see and we, we put effort and we put energy towards the the behavior that we want we want to see more of right so for example i think someone put on on the chat you know she wanted to see her kids brush her teeth maybe without a fuss a little bit more so something like i noticed that you went and you got your toothbrush and you got the toothpaste and you brush your teeth tonight i can see how responsible you are that you're really showing me that you know how to look after your teeth Ideas like that, right? Um, it's just um, an observation. Every time I use a Kodak moment, says to me, are you giving me compliment and being sarcastic? <laughs> so thinks I'm being sarcastic, um, although I'm not saying it that way. Every time I comment on what he's doing um, and how I've noticed it. Um, it's quite a common reaction, especially when, when we're, we're first trying to do it. And um, I, I, there are some kids even that will go further and will say like, stop, I don't want to hear that. And at that point, I mean, we go back to our stands, right? The stands was that number one, that, that num- stand number two is that I'm going to give energy to positive and I'm not going to be drawn into negative interactions. And at that point, you know, you can just very matter of factly, if his question is, are you being sarcastic? Very matter of factly, just say, no, I really like what you're doing or I really, you know, appreciate it. Or, I really see how, how it makes you great. If your kid is going stronger and 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 kind of like, um, um, you know, saying, "Oh, I don't want to hear that," or whatever, you can say something simply like, "Well, I love it, and I and I'm going to keep giving you the positive um, um, feedback or whatever you want to call it, right?" And it, it's it's just don't get drawn into it. And I think over time, um, um, kids will they, they will react to it. But I think the fact that they're responding shows that it's making an impact, and it's a very very common reaction where kids are like. What's what's going on? This is this is new. How do I how do I sort of um, process it? And some, sometimes they're just seeing is this gonna is this gonna stick? And and we as the parents we we want to make it stick because it really is a powerful tool as we're gonna see. So yes, yeah, I, 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 I definitely wouldn't give up on it. I mean, even think about let's say a spouse all of a sudden would start giving compliments. I'm not suggesting that all of our spouses don't automatically, but let's say. No, Are uh, you suggesting that some spouses do give compliments? <laughs> <laughs> I see. A cu- I see a couple of smiles there, which actually worries me. But not not good, not not going that way. And and then it's like, oh, I don't want that. It's like it's so unusual. But the reality is, probably they do want it. And after a while, I think it was sort of, you know, something that becomes normal. At the beginning, it might. And, and they need it. They do. They yeah. do need it. So 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 keep. What what we're going to do today is we are going to look at rules a little bit. Now, some of our kids may have neutral feelings towards. Um, rule, rules. Some of us, some of the kids, and I think this is especially for kids that tend to find themselves in trouble a little bit more than your average child. I don't know if anyone here has a child that might fit that definition. <laughs> uh, none of us. Oh, well, okay. There are such a thing as some children tend to find themselves in the hot spot of trouble. Now, these kids tend to... You know what? Let's even ask a really good question to the people here. Why are rules important? If we don't get that, we're not going to... Be, not, Forget about the rest. Why are rules important? Why do we need to have rules? Boundaries, to help them know what boundaries are. Uh, absolutely, absolutely boundaries. But what, why, are, why are boundaries important? 
Oh, some things will be dangerous, no? They okay. don't know right from wrong, so we've got to teach them. 100%. So you've said, yeah, Elle said two things there. You've said number one is because to keep them safe, right? You know, if you think of a three-year-old and you don't have the boundary that you must hold my hand when you cross the road, that's kind of dangerous, right? And number two is, is, is you say to teach them to teach them right from wrong, right? Any other answers? To avoid, to avoid chaos. <laughs> Yes, yes, it's not just to avoid chaos, but it's also to avoid chaos in our home. Um, again, it's the, same, it's the same thing within a relationship, within a marriage. There has to be certain rules. If there are those rules. Just to, to clarify, a lot of these rules are unspoken rules, right? But, you know, you wouldn't, for example, call your spouse names, right? Or you wouldn't, like certain things, they, they may not be written, you know, written down, but they're, they're understood rules. But go ahead. Sorry, Flynn. You, know, you wouldn't, for example, interrupt your spouse. That, that, <laughs> that, that would be, let's say, one unspoken rule. <laughs> In your case, it's okay because you're so much more wise. But um, again, there are certain <laughs> levels of respect or there are certain, um, you know, certain situations that we would not, you know, whether it's abuse or whether it's an affair, it doesn't matter what it is, there are certain things that are just not acceptable in a, in a, in a marriage either. You know, I think in each age, um, there are certain boundaries, and the reality is it's the same thing between us and God, which ultimately is a relationship as well. You know, there are rules in Judaism. It isn't just a game. It isn't just something which is fun. Yes, there's a tremendous amount of fun within Judaism. There are rules as well. There are rules, and that's how any quality relationship works. There has to be rules. Otherwise, the relationship doesn't work, doesn't function. It's not real, and it's, you know, if, you, if you've got a marriage which is sort of doing what you want, then it, it's not going to work. And if you've got a relationship with a kid where they can do whatever they want whenever they want in the long term it isn't going to work and again that's that's our religion as well there are rules there's no question and about it i think also if you think about football for example same thing right there are rules that's how the game the game runs there has to, there has that you know the rules are what function and and we don't think of it but there are rules in in in, in the way the world functions as well and our children as adults will have to understand and play by those rules right for example if you show up late every day to your job something's probably going to happen those are rules and our kids in order for our kids to be successful they have to learn to live with it in order to answer your question because i thought it was such a great question the question was do we always have to follow through on the rules and you basically i think have three options right number one is a, a lot of your our rules are going to be rules that we no, but we may not actually write them down as or tell them as rules. We're get, going to get to that. But when a situation comes up, you have three options. You have you you can decide in your heads not not to mention anything and 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 just let it go if it's something that you feel that you can't follow through on. If your child is not in the place, you know, we we, we discuss that rules when we put boundaries into place, they should be A, C, D, and C, right? So it is it is it age appropriate or are we asking too much for a child if you're thinking about it right if you come home from the park and your child is absolutely starving and they're i don't know two and a half and they're absolutely starving and you want to tell them put your shoes away that's not probably a good time to do it right so in that sort of situation don't bring up the rule right but once you have brought up the rule you've then got two choices you either follow through or you can, or you can change it a little bit. So, for example, if let's say you know um, um, you're, you've you've made a mistake and you you've asked your child for to follow through on a rule when when they're not in the pl place to do it, right? <coughs> Where you've said put your shoes away, and you can recognize that your child is falling apart um, um, because they're hungry or they're tired or whatever. You can say to them, "Come, I'll help you. We'll do it together." Right? So you're still following through on the rule, but but you're, you're recognizing that, that there's a situation. So in the short answer to your question is, you can internally decide not, to, not like if your child's not in, not in, in a place to, to not follow through on it, you, or you could say the rule and follow through, or you could say the rule and sort of like give them the help to fo follow through the rule. But what you can't do is say the rule and then not follow through, because then it makes it much, much harder to have that consistency. You know, again, I think we're going to finish at this point, but I think Yael's question was so big. I mean, we, but I think all of us as homework for this week is to think yourself, because this is, again, I asked this question before, because I think it's absolutely crucial. Not just now why rules are important. I think we've all got our own thoughts and that we've discovered that unless you've got those boundaries, you're in real trouble in a relationship. 
Um, but to think about your own individual kids, what are the boundaries? Mm -hmm. What are they? What is, what is it you're trying to accomplish? You know, think about it over the course of this week. You know, think about your kid. What is not acceptable no, mat no matter what? You know, it could be a one-year-old. It could be a 15-year-old. What is, you know, what, what sort of is that point? And I think, you know, once we've sort of got that clear, a couple of sessions, I think will be much, much more beneficial once we realize what actually, what do we have to say no to, whether it's we've got one kid or we've got more than one kid. Um, each kid, what is that point of um, unacceptability that I have to be able to stand up for? Because rules are so important in any relationship. And it also, um, um, and it's also individual to our homes, right? Because different homes are going to have different um, things that they, they find acceptable and, and, and different homes are going to have different things that, that don't find it, um, that, you know, different rules based on, on, on your, your child and also your home. Good, Good luck. luck with this week. You guys are going to all be fantastic. Whatever you manage to get done, it, you, you know, you're I there didn't, didn't for your know. kids. That, 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 that is, that is, that's the most important thing. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your feedback, your questions for future episodes. And please take a moment, think about someone else who might benefit from this and forward it on to them. If you enjoyed this podcast, You'll love my book, Living Beautifully, for more insights on how to bring meaning, joy, love into your life based on timeless Jewish wisdom. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. And please may take a moment to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out.